Hello, it's Martin from Weisley Automotive and I'm just outside of our showroom and today is an interesting day because as you can see behind me we've had this EV box charger unit installed here basically when we started operating out of these premises a couple of years ago and since then it has been serving us great. It supports three phase, but that unfortunately only applies in theory at this point because the cable started fraying and especially when it's hot outside, not like today, it will charge for only about 10-15 minutes and then cut off, most likely because of overheating. They're also quite temperamental with Zoe's, so we thought the time has officially come for an upgrade and I will show you which product we decided to go for in just a second. So this is your last glimpse of the old one in with the new one. Before any work commences, the power is checked using a Type 2 tester. All three phases are good, so after inspecting our utility cabinet, the supply is cut to safely start removing the old EV box unit. At this point, you can probably observe from the branded high-vis that we ended up going with Hypervolt. Special plastic tools are needed to remove the EV box fascia, revealing the three-phase electronics underneath. All the connections are undone and the rest of the unit unscrewed from the wall as well. The wiring is pulled back to make way for a fresh install. At this point, Stuart noticed a serious issue. One of the wires which was feeding the unit was frayed, caused by it being in constant contact with the sharp edge of the hole in the concrete wall, which is why wires should be protected by an additional insulation sleeve. In fact, Hypervolt uses their own custom cable, which does not only suitably protect the power wires inside, but there are a couple more spares for some very cool tricks, you will see in just a second. With the interior wall cleared as well, the new all-in-one cable can be pulled through for the exciting part, which is unboxing and installing the new charging point. It consists of three pieces. The front fascia, we went with the grey version, the RGB LED cover, and the backplate with all the power electronics. By default, it is set up for power to be fed in from the bottom, but given we are using the existing hole from the EV box, we will utilize the Hypervolt's back entry point. You can see everything starting to take shape now. Some mounting holes are drilled, but credit to Stuart for going above and beyond and removing all the old plugs from our wall as well. Here you can see the cross section of the proprietary cable and how it carries the individual wires. Also, note how the charging cable is easy to remove and swap out in case of damage or if you would like to change between the Type 1 or Type 2 plug. Everything is wired up and you may have noticed that there are much fewer connections here compared to the previous unit. And that's because Hypervolt for now only sells single-phase 7 kW boxes. More about that later in the video though. On the other side of the wall it's more of the same. The old three-phase setup is replaced by the new single-phase and everything is tidied up nicely. The EV box needed a dedicated earthing rod, which made the entire setup extra complicated. The earth rod shouldn't really be needed in normal use, it is present just in case something goes wrong to make sure that the car won't suddenly become live. The Hypervolt uses clever electronics to check for any faults, so doesn't need a dedicated earth rod, making the install easier and neater. On the topic of clever features, it includes internet connectivity, both wired through Ethernet using the additional spare wires or wireless through Wi-Fi. Stuart has all the gadgets and uses a professional Wi-Fi signal strength tester to assess the situation and with fantastic signal reception even outside, we decide to go with the wireless setup. That will keep a wire from the bunch available for circuit load sensing, enabling dynamic load balancing if needed. The unused bottom cable cutout is plugged and the LED frame installed. These Hypervolts feature multicolor LEDs all around the perimeter and in the middle underneath the Bolt logo. The test mode shows how that looks, but rest assured they can be customized to your preference. It's time to move to the software side, all handled by the installer with Hypervolts in-house setup app. It's super quick to establish the Wi-Fi connection, create an account, and once ready, the lights flash to indicate that everything is good to go. The front fascia is secured and you can see it sits a bit offset from the wall, creating a channel for storing the cable without any additional holders. Even the longest 10 meter cable which we opted for to enable us to charge cars all over the quad fits fine. The only external piece is the dummy type 2 socket for securing the plug. The tester shows everything is working as expected, Arthur gives the install a thumbs up and immediately gets distracted by trying out the different LED colors in the app. I'm sure you had enough of me talking, so here is the result, charging our beloved bevy, of course. Mm -hmm. 
And that's it. We will let you know how we get on with it. It has been a couple of weeks since the installation and everything is going great so far. And in fact, we are hoping this is a start of a long collaboration with Hypervolt. Because if you will want to pick up a home charger right as you leave the showroom, if you buy any of our i3s, Tesla Model 3s, anything like that, we will be able to supply them and pop them right in the boot for you. The only thing you will need to do is find a qualified installer through the Hypervolt website. Speaking of the website, if you already have a car and still haven't had a home charger fitted and you want to get the Hypervolt, you can do that right through there or you can email wisely at hypervolt.co.uk and they will be able to advise further. Huge thanks to the Hypervolt team for coming out and installing the unit. It's very much appreciated. As you know, we like being transparent, so I do need to mention that the unit has been provided for free. But beyond the whole deal with supplying Hypervolts, there are even further plans where we will be part of some beta testing. Obviously, these support over-the-air updates, but even on top of that, Hypervolt has a new unit coming out in the near future, which will feature three-phase support and up to 22 kilowatts of charging power. It doesn't make that much of a difference for most residential or home users because most of those properties only come with a single phase power supply. But with us being an industrial site, we do have access to the three phase and it's something which would be nice to future proof ourselves. Because even though there are not that many cars which feature full on 22 kilowatt charging at this point, other than Renault Zoe's, the very latest ones which have big batteries now have options of 22 kilowatt onboard chargers, like for example the Audi e-trons and the Porsche Taycans. Of course, this video focused on the installation process and a little bit of behind the scenes on how that went. But we will have a dedicated video going in depth on the features of the Hypervolt because there is lots and lots to explore. But yeah, I think that's about it. As always, leave any questions in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.